Welcome to Plus Politics. Tonight, we speak with an amazing personality in Nigeria. He's an elder statesperson, Chief Olabode George Aton Odua of the Yoruba land. He's a Nigerian politician who became the military governor of Ondo State and later chairman of the Nigerian Poth Authority and then national vice chairman in the southwest zone of the People's Democratic Party, deputy national chairman of the People's Democratic Party in the South, and Deputy National Chairman overall, and former Chairman of the Bank of Industry. Good evening, sir, and thank you for joining us. My pleasure. So um, let's quickly get to the crux of the matter. If you look at the state of the nation, a lot's been going on. Uh, but as an elder states person, I'd like to ask you, what do you, or what would you say about uh, some of the most recent decisions taken by the president, uh, that's Bola Amatinubu, some of which includes the Student Loan Act and uh, the Electricity Act, among others? Let me say this, that um, in my part of the world, my part of my culture, if somebody comes to you and says he's going on a long journey, what you can do, what we used to do, what we still do, is to pray for that person that as you go, may you go in peace. May the blessing of the Almighty surround you. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ so surround you. May the Almighty God be your pilot. You know, it's still too early to start judging or condemning or... So far, students loan, I don't know the modalities, but makes a lot of political sense. Uh, because there are millions and millions of parents and also children who cannot afford to pay any school fees. And education, education, education is so important in any society because education makes people easy to rule but very difficult to deceive. So when you have a sizable number, sizable number, 90% say of your, of your population being educated, they will be able to follow your school of thought. If you are lying to them, they will query you. If you are telling them the truth and you put a smile on their faces, they will acknowledge it. So uh, the signing of that into law, we don't know the modalities, but I want to plead with them that that policy should be well thought out, the procedure, because they must realize that it is not every part of this country that is a metropolitan city. You need, they will go to the bank. The parents could be illiterate. Are you going to run it through the local government? Or are you going to run it through the state government? There will be an agency. So those are the modalities. But the concept in itself, to me, uh, is laudable because when Papa Ulo was started in the 50s, the British told him he would fail. But his was even a free education. But this one is a student loan, you know. And you, you saw what uh, President Biden did in America recently that we don't want to unburden, I mean, overburden those students. That when they now graduate, before they get a job, they have a big loan on their neck. The government must plan to have do, those who are, have shown positive uh, leanness to, to education or they are brilliant, they must be given free education, you know. Then the others who are managing, you can do it, and it should be interest-free loan, as I've told. It's not interest-free. I, I haven't read the details, but <laughs> the concept in itself is acceptable to me, but let them make sure that they don't overburden 
these kids. Because when you get a graduate, you'll be looking for a job, be looking for a house, be looking for, <laughs> for a car, be looking for a better life. So maybe sometimes down the road, they may say, okay, you are allowed to pay about a quarter of the loan you have taken if you've done well in your school. Because not everybody that starts that journey completes it. So um, maybe I will just discuss uh, there are several criteria. Just like you've said, you, you have, haven't gone through uh, mm. some of the conditions or requirements of the Student Loan Act. But mm. a bit of it is that um, those who are students of the polytechnic, uh, colleges of education, mm. universities, I mean, you have a right to actually apply. But uh, one of some, such conditions is that is expected to have a guarantor who should be like a civil servant and has had like a pascal for like 12 years, uh, or a judicial officer, however it is. There's also a requirement that you should have, you know, after this loan, two years after graduation, you should be able to get a job and pay the loan back, you know. So some criteria that Nigerians have quite query, you know, I'm not saying how can these things be, especially if you look at the rate of unemployment at almost 41% in 2023, how can these things be? And some people already believe that uh, this is like putting the cart before the horse. I, 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 you know, I, I had the news about this student-free loan and um, I chuckled a little bit because I went through it. I graduated about 56, 57 years ago, you know? And I remember very well that there was uh, the, the, in Western region then, they gave scholarship to university students. And Lagos State had just been created that was in 1967. And we were in 1968. I was still in my first year. That day, um, four of my colleagues, uh, Dr. Femi Anibaba, who is now a doctor, uh, Alex Oni, uh, Jabesi, then Kwesi Banasco, myself, we were there having lunch the university and then the students who came from western region were all jubilating that gotten scholarships and that means it's not a loan it's free scholarship so i told them i said look let's think about this we are now, we now have we can benefit from western region but we can benefit from our state they have just created legal state that we should go and go to the governor's office and go and discuss it. They said, go to the governor's office? Are you crazy? <laughs> I said, yes, let's go there. You know, they said, ah, the soldiers will arrest us and they will lock us up. And I said, don't, don't worry. The wife of the governor is my mother's cousin. She was a Miss Aganga Williams, now Mrs. Johnson. That if the governor locks us up, my mom will go there and until we release us. On that premise, the following day after the morning lectures, we headed to well, Lagos, to the governor's office at the King, you know, the, um, the King George Defeat Stadium, the opposite. That was where Governor Johnson's office was. We got to the gate, four of us, and they looked at us, the, the guards there said, what do you want? We said, we want to see the governor. He said, look, do you have an appointment? We said, no, but we are students from University of Lagos. They looked at us. One said we should get out and move ourselves out of the place. But there was their boss, um, the guard commander, who came and said, look, are you truly from University of Lagos? We said, yeah. Did we have an appointment? We said, no, but we want to see the governor. I said, we should hold on. He went in and came back and said we should write down our names. Four of us, we wrote down our names. And we were all engineering students. So we sent the names in. Now, those, they then asked us to come in. You know the people who were there at that time? The Attorney General 
and Commissioner for Justice, Papa Bankole Uki. The Solicitor General, Papa uh, Joe Williams. Uh, the third person was the Secretary to Government. Um, this uh, Baba, um, uh, I've forgotten his name now. But the fourth person was the protocol chief to the governor, Papa Domingo. So when they saw our names, they said, ah, this must be real Lagosians. They said, we should come in. The governor was yet to come. So we went there, of course, we all prostrated, greeting all these old men. And then they said, what is our grouse? We said, sir, today the West announced the scholarship for the students. Why can't our state also give us scholarship? They listened. They said, OK, all right, but you know, we have just started. We are still about a year old in government. But well, we will think about it. You know, two months after that, Lagos State started this scholarship scheme for students. Now, the general concept, I'm, I'm telling you that the act of governance is to listen to the pain of your people. Makes a lot of sense. They want to start it, but the vagaries, the problems, that will be involved in it. You must go and look for a civil servant. You must go and look. Now already they are segregating. Because how many of such people will come from some villages? Because this is a national policy. So they need to sit down, work out a scheme where every Nigerian who is looking forward to some good education but cannot afford it, must benefit. It is not just a, a, a policy for the children of the privileged. You, you understand? So they must sit down, work out a procedure, because the major problem in this country is working out uh, procedures that will be long enduring, that will make a lot of both political sense, a social sense, and humane in its nature, so that everybody will benefit from this policy. It should not end up for the children of the privileged alone. And we are watching, because we are in the opposition. We are watching what impact it was going to have. And um, invariably, invariably, this nation, if we seal all the leakages of the kind of money that will that disappears from the from the covers from the treasury we should be in a position to give free education to most nigerians so so when you say uh, the kind of money what kind oh, of money jeepers. now all the stories you are hearing those leakages those those those, the, those millions and tons and tons of money, dollars, and uh, the, the, the charade that goes on between the central bank and the commercial banks. It is mind-boggling. And I, I, I wonder how you are even going to disburse the money. Is it through the same commercial banks? And the major thing they do, I am challenging them publicly all the commercial banks in this country, I am challenging them publicly. What impact have they had on Nigerian micro-business people, medium uh, enterprises, and even the big ones? And at the interest rate they are charging, can they, can they by, by their establishment, impact positively? on the economic sector of this country. You know, all of, most of them, I'm saying it, they can challenge me. They're round tripping, they get dollars from the central bank, and they do nothing. If you go to them to say, look, borrow me X, Y, Z, the amount of hell you go through, 
the interest rate they will slam on you. How can you produce? So, so we will eventually get to that part of the conversation. But okay. uh, just we, before we move away from that, uh, two significant acts mm. that has been passed by this president, and one of such is the Electricity Act. Mm. The private sector involvement, it feels like unbundling uh, state governments or state governors can now generate power. Uh, what do you make of this? Do you think that we're gradually getting to that point where we say states can control their resources? And do you see this as viable? Uh, you know, this issue was raised when we had the... Um, uh, uh, Constitutional Review Committee. I, I, how can we, the, the, the whole of the constitution of this country is like a military, is set up for a military organization. It's not working. Every decision goes all the way back to Abuja. It doesn't work. We copied the American system. You think the governor of California will now be begging on monthly basis in Washington to give him the, their own re share of the resources, to give him how he will manage this, to give him how he will supply power to his people, so how he will supply water to the people. What, what on the globe is he doing there in Washington? And the closer the governance is to the people, the better they will be managed. You know, I, I retired as a general. I know what it takes to be in the military. It's hierarchical. The other goes from the top and percolates to the base. That cannot work with a democratic uh, dispensation. Power must come from the base, the will of the people. So you think this is brilliant? To me, what I am saying is that he's not only just one, he's, he's, he's like he's a cherry picking. We need to revisit. And there is a report of the completion of that, the, 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 the constitutional conference. All these things you are talking about are there. Reduce the powers at Abuja. You must re 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 reform the whole system, whereby you, you, you give more powers to the states. What is wrong in having state police? What is wrong in having local government police? Well, but now we have uh, states having capacity to generate power, so th that's uh, uh, good. If, if they have powers to generate, good enough. Good enough. But first of all, they must have their resources. You take in, on one hand, you take in all the resources to Abuja to be shared, mm? <laughs> and you are telling them go and generate. At what rate? Would they generate? Because I'm an, an electrical engineer. How much would they generate? If you decide you have uh, a thermal uh, station, you know, gas turbines, you will need gas. You need power lines owned by you. You'll be able to go from the main power, the high voltage ones, before you come to the distribution network. So how, how, how are they going to do it? How are you, you must, you know, it's like giving, I'm telling you, okay, I'll give you a free hand to go and do something. And at the same time, I am holding you back by your fork, by your frock, and saying, hey, wait a minute, you must still come back to Abuja. It doesn't work that way. When you let go, let go. All the resources, you know, are, are, are still being collated compiled at the national, why should all major resources, if we copy the American system, take Ports Authority? The New York Ports is run by the mayor of New York. The airport in New York 
is run by the mayor of New York. They generate their income, they manage the people. You know, the, there is this definition of what you call politics. And I, I want uh, people to listen. Politics is the management of the resources of the land for the benefit of the people. That's brilliant. I'm, I'm not sure I had that definition. That's it. That's it. What? So if any politician comes out to you and tells you that, listen, please vote for me. I will represent you. What is he saying? I will go there to ensure we manage the resources of the land for your benefit. But is that what is happening? When all the resources are channeled through one source, and then it gets there, the Minister of Finance will sit down on some whatever, start chopping the <laughs> But again, uh, do you think that with this Electricity Act, it feels like we're gradually unbundling, uh, maybe we're just gradually decentralizing the center and empowering the company what, what, unit? I I'm asking your yeah, thoughts now. I'm telling you, look, okay, let me tell you this from my experience. When Papa Obasanjo was president, Huh? We bought 18 gas turbines, 18 gas turbines by General Electric. They landed in this country. If they have all been functioning today, we will have had more than enough to distribute. All right? 18 gas turbines. Now, why? haven't they been firing lack of gas? But when you go around the southern flanks of this country, you see gas being flared. So it is not that easy to say you want to go into generation by any state. One, you must have gas, somewhere to collect the gas, pipe the gas to the station, fire the turbines, when you generate, you must have enough transmission lines strong enough to take the power and start distributing within your state. It is not cheap. It is not cheap. But there's nothing wrong if you have the resources in state A and state B has some other requirements more than you. You can cooperate. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? Rather than one mighty uh, corporation, federal corporation, managing all the distribution, they had, you know, they did what they call the disco, the distribution units, they, they privatized them. But the production was still handled by the federal government. Up till now, they're not producing enough. All right. <laughs> so who is fooling who? Oh, it's easy to say, okay, you can go and, you know, uh, generate and uh, where, like, okay, take my state. Where is the gas we should use for a, a, a turbine? I'm sure we'll have uh, that conversation some other time. But quickly, let's get to the headlines okay. now. Uh, several headlines has quoted, this, I mean, there's some quotes, I don't know if they are, it's a misquote, to say that you would not congratulate uh, President Tunubu. Then, of course, uh, if during his inauguration or what have you, I'd like to find out if that position is correct. You know, when people say congratulate, now, as an individual and as a very strong member of my party, I told you that I am a life member of the board of trustee of my party. Number two, I am also the one representing the Southwest in the national caucus of my party, we are still in court. How, how do you expect me to jump ship? How would the members of my party with the high responsibility, you know, that is uh, thrown on me, jump ship 
when the, the, the process is not over. And I told the, uh, the guys who came, I absolutely, I have nothing personal with uh, uh, Bola Tinumbu. Bola Tinumbu, we have nothing personal, you know. But hey, look at it from my own political angle. The day the justices will finish that A has won, B has lost, we know that the lines are now well defined like the Berlin Wall. The only thing I can do now is to pray for this country that as we are going, may he guide us. As we are going, may he be our pilot. Let there be peace in the land. That's all I can do now. My party, we are, we are fighting every day in the court, you know, presenting our case and this and that. And until then, the process is not over. I mean, you don't need to be, to be a high professor before you can know that, you know. If I was an independent person that is non-partisan, I could do whatever I want. But I'm being guided by the rules and regulations, and I don't want to, 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 to behave in a manner that will place me. I mean, the kind of respect and regard that I have in my party, one, a life member of the board of trustee of the party, two, the only man representing the Southwest in the national caucus of our party. Let's wait until the judges in the Supreme Court when they decide who is the president. Otherwise, if you see me go there, then I become a perpetual traitor. We'll take a short break. When we return, the conversation continues with Chief Olabodi George. Stay with us. <music> 